In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to add background music to your videos. I'm using the most recent pre-release of Premiere Pro, but you can follow along with other versions as well. This process is somewhat universal, so you may learn a thing or two from this lesson, even if you're accustomed to other video editing applications. Let's get started. First, you'll need to select a music track. I created a tutorial showing how to download free to use music from YouTube's audio library. Check that out if you don't already have some music to play with. There is also a built-in library of audio tracks you can purchase from within Premiere Pro. Next, with my video project open in Premiere Pro, I'll drag the music file into the project library and then onto the timeline to import it. I like to keep my assets organized, but you can also just drag it directly onto the timeline. Ensure that it's placed onto the topmost audio track so that you're able to see it. Next, I'll expand the height of the audio track so I can see the audio waveform. This will help you visualize the beginning of the music, the end, and any pauses or drastic changes in the volume. Once the track is on the timeline, the start of the music needs to align with the start of the video. Ensure that the magnet icon is active. This will help you snap the audio track to the video track. Select the arrow tool and drag the audio to the left if necessary to align the audio and video tracks. Insert the playhead at the beginning of the timeline and press the plus key. This will zoom the view closer so you can see in the waveform where the music starts. You can also drag the bottom bar to zoom in and out. Some audio tracks do not start immediately, so you may need to trim some of the silence off by selecting the razor blade icon, which can cut tracks, and clicking on the track where you want to cut it. If the snapping is making that difficult, you can press the S key to disable that. Now use the arrow tool to right click on the part of the audio track you want to remove and choose ripple delete. I recommend making delete the keyboard shortcut for this. Ripple delete will remove the unwanted part of the track and shift the rest of the tracks on the timeline to close the gap. If you want to learn more about this, check out my faster editing with Premiere Pro tutorial. It's also likely that the audio track does not match the duration of the video. We will come back to how to handle that shortly. Because you may not know exactly which music track you want to accompany your video, it may take some experimenting to discover what works best. So let's look at a few steps you may want to take before committing to an audio track. Most music you download should already be mixed to an adequate volume. If you're simply adding music over a silent video, then you may not need to change the volume of the music unless it's too low. Just beware not to boost the music volume too much, or you may create audio clipping which will make the music sound unpleasant. In other cases, you may have audio present in your video track, like a narrator for example. If so, you'll need to lower the volume of the music track so you can hear the narration clearly. You can adjust the audio levels in several different ways. First, I'll show you the quick and dirty way. This will allow you to preview the music against the narration to get an idea of whether the music works or not. However, there is a better way to adjust the audio levels once you decide on the music you want to use. To adjust the audio levels per clip, you can just move the horizontal line on the audio clip up or down to change the volume levels. Only do this if your music is a single clip. Alternatively, you can open the audio track mixer and adjust the levels for the entire track numerically or with a fader. For videos with narration, you'll probably want to lower the music to around negative 25 to negative 28 decibels. Now I'll show you the better way to adjust your audio levels. Select the narration track or drag to select multiple tracks and open the essential sound panel. Then designate the narration as dialog. Next, open the loudness tab and analyze the track. You may need to click this a few times to get it to negative 23 luffs. If your narration is composed of more than one single take, you may need to process each clip individually. The loudness filter will make the volume of the narration more uniform, and you'll have a luffs target value to compare the loudness of the music to. You'll also need to select the music track and designate it as music and essential sound, then apply the same loudness filter. This time the luffs value will be different. Negative 25 luffs should give you a good starting point, but the optimal loudness is really going to depend on your narration and audio. We'll likely need to tweak the levels to get it perfect. Under Clip Volume, you can enable Level to increase or decrease the volume of the music and narration. You can press Spacebar to preview what you have so far. Now those are some doubts that artists who are brand new to digital art may have had, but let's move forward in time a bit. You may want to spend some more time mixing your audio later, but we'll go on to the next step. Ideally, the duration of your music track or tracks should match the duration of your video. If your music is too long, you can simply trim off the excess with the Razor tool. I'll show you how to fade it out shortly. If your music is not long enough, then there are a couple of options to consider. First, you can use several music tracks to fill the space. 
Just drag them into your composition and place them next to each other in the order you like. You'll need to optimize the levels for each clip to make the volume consistent using the steps in the previous chapter. But what if you don't want to use more than a single music track in your composition? If you're using the pre-release or a later version of Premiere Pro, there is a new feature called Remix that can use AI to extend the duration of a music track. Set the duration of the music, which will be the duration of the video. Then experiment with the properties to see what sounds best. You can see visual cues on the audio track that symbolize where Remix is looping parts of the audio to extend it. Remixing works fairly well if the track is fairly repetitive anyway, or if you aren't trying to extend a track for too long. Otherwise, it tends to generate something that sounds very repetitive. If that's the case, then using multiple music tracks would be a better option. The final thing we need to do to the music is apply some fades. You may want to fade the music in or out, or you may need to crossfade several tracks to transition from one to another. One way to do this is to apply an audio transition effect to the clip. The default constant power crossfade works pretty well. You can use the arrow tool to change the fade duration, or double click on it to set it numerically. Another way to fade the volume is to apply curves. Hold Ctrl and click on the horizontal volume line on a clip to add a point. Control click on another point and then drag the line down. This will fade the volume following the curve of the line. You can adjust the curve to modify the rate of change. To cross fade multiple audio tracks together, you can either align them on the same track and then use an audio transition effect in between them, or you can place the music on separate tracks and then overlap them while applying volume curves at the overlaps. Let's preview the composition one last time. Evaluating the audio with both speakers and headphones will give you a good idea of what the audio levels sound like to a range of listeners. If you're satisfied with your results, all that's left is to render the project. I hope you enjoyed learning how to add background audio to your videos. If you did, be sure to become a subscriber of this channel. Thanks for watching and stay creative.